A simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank. This is part 8, completing and fitting the regulator and the wet header. As I mentioned in the last episode, the wet header is the part that takes the wet steam from the boiler to feed the superheater. And here are the two parts that I've made. The first one threads simultaneously into the boiler bush and into the copper pipe from the regulator itself. The first job in this episode is to thread the holes in the flange which screws into the boiler. As I mentioned in the last episode, I've made this flange a bit thicker. It's shown on the drawing as being 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter thick, but this is 5 sixteenths. So when I finally bolt the wet header to the flange, there's far less chance of stripping the thread. After I threaded the first hole, 2BA, I fitted a bolt in place. This makes it much easier to grip the part. I didn't have to use a cloth to stop it from spinning round in my hand. In no time I'd threaded all four holes, and the good news is, all four bolts fitted perfectly. There's a lot to be said for using a rotary table for all of the operations. This part is very accurate, and the wet header block fits to the flange in any position. Call it paranoia or whatever you want, but I've marked the position by punching a couple of centre pop marks. As I use the wet header as a guide for the tap, the marks just confirm this but it does fit in every position, and I didn't have to enlarge the holes in the wet header to make it fit on the flange. You can actually gauge the accuracy, look at the size of screwdriver that I'm using, and it's withdrawing the bolts with ease, no binding anywhere. The holes in the wet header, by the way, are 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. When making components like this, it's really important to take care of any burrs created during the drilling process. I removed the burrs on the front face of the flange by using some 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper, but for these burrs on the inner part of the flange, these were removed by fitting the part in the chuck in the lathe and machining them away. In order to test fit the flange into both the boiler bush and the regulator pipe, I'm using a couple of brass bolts to help me turn the flange. When I finally fit the flange in place, I will use some steel bolts because brass bolts are too soft and will probably shear off. I'll show you that shortly. Time to look at fitting the regulator from the other end. I've removed the regulator handle and polished up the part on my polishing spindle. Then I proceeded to fit all of the brass bolts. I was going to use stainless steel, but these will be fine. This is a very low stress part. It's pulled very tightly into position by tightening the flange at the front of the boiler. Here I'm temporarily fitting the regulator handle. It's going to come off again because it needs cleaning up. Now the regulator is fitted in place. Using a couple of pieces of steel, I'm tightening the flange into the correct position. It needs to finish up so I can drill a hole in the side of it to take a pipe out to feed a superheater. I've fitted a gasket to this part, but really it doesn't need it because it's completely saturated with Loctite 542. It's very important that both of the threads on this flange engage both the boiler bush and the short copper pipe from the regulator without any possibility of a leak. If a leak developed in the centre pipe, you would get full boiler pressure to the cylinders, which is not desirable. So plenty of Loctite 542, you can see the excess which I'm going to wipe off very shortly, and here I'm tightening the flange into its final position followed by wiping away the excess Loctite 542. I'll clean out the threaded part using a plug tap. The next part of the job is to actually fit the wet header to the flange. As I showed earlier, this is a very accurately made component, so I can fit it in any position. But in the end, I couldn't help myself but line it up on the two centre pop marks. In this clip, I'm scribing the position where I need to drill a hole for the superheater feed. This is a superheater out of the previous boiler, and the previous boiler was a super simplex boiler with three superheater flues. But as you can see, the new boiler only has one superheater flue. If you look at the old wet header and the superheater arrangement, you can see how it works. The wet steam from the boiler, after the regulator, first of all enters a collector, and into this collector one end of each of the superheater flues is silver-soldered or brazed to the collector. 
then each of the superheater pipes from the wet header then goes all the way down the superheater flues and over the fire. At this point, the superheater tubes which are made of stainless steel are welded together in the firebox end and then returned back down the individual superheater flues. Because these superheater elements are actually over the fire in the firebox, they get extremely hot and that's why they have to be welded. Silver soldering is no good in this application. The silver solder would just melt. The only parts I'm going to keep from this superheater arrangement are the stainless steel superheater tubes because they may come in useful for another job later on and the union nut which I will reuse to fasten my superheater that I'm going to make to the main input to the steam chests and the rest of the piping and the collectors are scrap. From time to time I've been referring to this book that came with the engine although as far as I can see some of the things that I would like to know are not in the book. For instance it doesn't tell you how to make the hollow stay more about that later. I know how to make the hollow stay, so I'll be making it shortly. I forgot to mention, this simplex is now my simplex. When I discussed the cost of repair of this engine with the customer who previously owned it and brought it to me in the first place, it became very apparent that the cost of repair was more than the model was worth. And as the customer just wanted to get rid of the model, it seemed a logical step to make a fair offer on it and everything worked out okay. I ended up with the engine that is now mine, so I can continue this series, finish it, and run it. A well-built simplex in good mechanical order is great fun to run. It doesn't weigh much, it's quite easy to transport. So when this coronavirus thing is over, I think I will join a local club in the York area, and I'll have a bit of fun driving it around a miniature railway. It's always good to pull passengers because steam locomotives don't perform very well unless they're pulling some weight. Just pulling me at 20 stones is about the same as pulling a bag of feathers. But with half a dozen people on the passenger truck behind you, the engine works a lot harder and raises a lot more steam. And that's it for this episode. I'd like to say stay safe and stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.